Little known fact, but there are actually only, just, there are actually only three workouts that all of us coaches who are giving you programs and whatnot, there are only three workouts that any of us have in our bag of tricks. You're, you don't need any others. So whether you're using our programs or if you're using our free workouts, we're basically all working off of the same thing. Stay tuned. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Shane Farmer. This is Dark Horse Rowing, where you build the life that you wanna live and we just happen to use rowing usually to get you there. So hit that subscribe button and the bell below it so that you can be here every time I come out with a new video. So let's take a look at the first of these buckets. And I like to call this bucket the short, fast, and plenty. And what I mean by this is that the pieces that you are going to be programming are going to be short. They're going to ask that you go very fast and you throw in a hefty amount of them. You, you have a lot of them. So what that looks like, for example, would be 20 by uh, 250 meter sprints. I don't know, they're, they're, that's just totally random. Or we could go by you know, 20 by 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. That's a 20 minute workout but it's short, fast, sprinty stuff. Why? Well, number one, it helps to improve your power, your ability to really deliver force into every stroke. And that requires that your body learns how to lock down, your muscles actually get stronger, transferring all this energy into the machine. That piece, then as well, you work on the energy systems, which would be the phosphocreatine energy system, as well as a little bit of anaerobic system. And of course, we are going to cover both phosphocreatine, anaerobic, anaerobic energy systems when it comes into these workouts. For those of you who want to nerd out on that stuff, please go do some more research. There's some excellent resources out there. You are going to work on that energy system that requires that you pull from your immediate energy sources, the stuff that allows you to right out of the gates, just go hard, fast, quick. That is what bucket one entails. So if you're writing a workout like this, let's give you an example now, a workout that would fit into this bucket would be some kind of a distance that maybe stays under, let's call it a thousand meters, maybe 750 meters, or like three minutes in length, somewhere like that. And you're doing a lot of them. You're working on that shorter energy system. Now, can we start to delineate between like three and four minute workouts and 30 or 15 second workouts? Yes, but we're talking broad strokes here. So three minutes or less, maybe let's call it 750 or less, and you're doing a lot of them. And that is going to help you basically amplify that short, fast, and plenty bucket. So that's bucket number one. When you're looking to craft a workout, there's a good place to start. Bucket number two is going to be the moderate, more well-placed and put together kind of workout. Just the, the middle range where it's just long enough that it's uncomfortable mentally and physically, but it's not so long that it's drudgery, all right? We're falling in the middle bracket here of workouts. And in this, I would classify something around like 1500 meters to 5,000. Yes, that's a big range of distance. Time-wise, let's call it five minutes to 15 to 20 minutes. That's a rough range there. The point of this bucket is that you are getting yourself comfortably uncomfortable for a long enough period of time that you learn where that suffer threshold is. I use that suffer word because frankly, that's what you're doing. You're learning how hard can I push and for how long can I maintain that? So when you start to get into these workouts, maybe you're doing 2000 meter repeats. A 2K repeated gets very uncomfortable because that, that mental emotion state that comes with 2000 meters, it's long enough, like you start to get exhausted. You're not just one and done where you're like, I can do anything for 500 meters. You really have to engage with the piece to do that. And that's where that middle range really falls. So you're serving to number one, improve a little bit of your anaerobic, but mostly anaerobic base. Let's call it more anaerobic in that sense, because you are really challenging that upper threshold. Now you're getting into the power with some endurance, right? We're not just pure endurance. There's still a demand of power hour that's needed there. You're creating this workout for yourself where you kind of just have to live in the mid zone. I'm not going to be on this for an hour. So I'm a little bit more comfortable knowing that. And I am going to program in some rest, something that is going to be, you know, five minutes of rest, enough time for me to really recoup before I get on to the next piece. That recouping, that regenerating piece, the recovery or the rest, whatever you want to call it, the longer you make that actually makes the workout harder in and of itself because it increases 
the demand expectation of each interval that you may do. Now you're gonna see fewer intervals here because you might be doing two intervals or three rather than 10 to 20 of an interval, something like that. So your intervals drop, your time or your distance increase, but not so long that you are just going straight into you know no man's land. And so that's really where you land in that middle range of workouts, that moderate range workout. And again, you're going to adjust this bucket as you see what's necessary. If you're working on improving your 2K distance, well, then you're going to spend some time here. Your workouts might range from 1500 to 3000 meters because it helps to go over 2000 so that your body doesn't just know how to go to 2000. And you're gonna start to challenge yourself in that range and you may see single pieces where you just do a 3000 meter for time or maybe it's a 5K for time where you just do that one or you might see a few intervals that get tossed in there. The final bucket, I like to call it the hefty and grindy workout. <laughs> The, I don't know, it's the long range stuff. This is the one where you're generally not going to do any more than two intervals of this. And at that point, I'm really not calling it an interval. It's more so you are just getting long periods, slogging through the meters on there. This is where you're in the low stroke rate range. You're on the machine for 30 minutes plus, or let's call it over 6,000 meters, where you have to truly understand and you get to a range, a fitness range, where you're essentially saying, I could do this for a very, long time. And what you are doing is helping to set your body up to really understand how do I just go forever? And what is my threshold there? So if for a 2K, you can pull up, it's called a 150 split. Of course, I'm speaking to, you know, on any machine, let's say it's a 150 split for 2000 meters. You probably can't do that for 10,000 meters. You need to learn what is the difference there and understand that there is value to this, not first and foremost, but on one hand, you get lots of strokes in and that is good because because you are able to think about your mechanics for a long time. I always say it takes a thousand strokes to break a bad habit. 10,000 meter piece is about a thousand strokes. So you have a long time to sit, think about what you've done. And once you get through that, you're able to make some changes or change some old habits or bad habits to refresh them for new. You also improve that very aerobic fitness range, that, that fitness that comes with just being able to go forever. And there's definitely something to being able to maintain for a long period of time. And then mentally you cross over this big, Big bridge. A few weeks ago, I did a hundred minute row. That was miserable. 60 plus 40, that's an hour and 40 minutes. That is a long time to just go straight. And the mental challenges that come with that, you could sit and watch an hour and 40 minute movie and the time would go like that. You wanna know what turns an hour and 40 minutes into 24 hours? Rowing, that happens whenever you get a long piece. And that's the tough part. You look at 60 minutes, it doesn't seem bad on paper. And then you take your five minutes into the piece and man, every minute feels like an eternity. So that's that third bucket that you end up going through. So let's wrap all of this up. The three buckets that you draw from, of course, there are nuances, there are ways that you can twist these and turn them and pull the levers and turn knobs and push buttons and make them different. And frankly, that's what makes a coach a coach. We understand what comes with all the small nuances and all those workouts. We learn how to blend all of them together to create this, this unique progression that happens. And that's what a good coach does. They're able to build a program that makes you better on one specific idea. You wanna get better at a 2K? Great, you give me eight weeks, and I will absolutely make you better. If you're interested by the way in that, make sure that you check out the crew linked in the description below. It is our online program where we have thousands of members who are improving at whatever distance they so choose because we write great programs that get you there and are guaranteed to work. I've literally been doing this for years and they work really well. Not bragging, that's just the truth. The point being, that's what makes a coach a coach is the ability to understand those buckets. But from a layman's terms, starting fresh, giving you the basics, then you are going to be able to make up your own workouts Make sure that you don't get stale on one or the other, that you don't overfill one bucket and you only do bucket short, sprinty, and plenty, right? What I forget what I actually called it to begin with, but you don't do too much of that. You need to balance it and you need to make sure that you give yourself enough recovery time or days off to really create a, a progression that makes sense for you, that keeps you engaged and entertained so that you don't get bored and burned out on the machine. Because at the end of the day, nobody wants that. You want to be able to have fun. I want you to have fun. And it's why I keep making workouts here for you on YouTube. Do I think that that is the best way to really progress on this machine? No, I think that it's there to give you something to engage you. And I would hope that when you, you start to find a passion for it or you find a love for it, that you find the next steps. And again, that's why the crew is down there is to let you take that next step. But when it comes to you being able to do it yourself, it's very empowering to be able to write your own workouts and understand that you are covering your bases and not just heavily weighting one over the other. 
Make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you get alerted when I come out with our next videos, including our workouts. And with that being said, if you are looking for workouts and perhaps you're at the beginning of your spectrum, come check out this beginner playlist right here where I give you plenty of beginner workouts where you get to follow along with me, I lead you through the process, and we just have some fun together. See you in the next one.